Hello, and welcome to Study Skills for Bio 101 students. My name is Stefan, and I will be guiding you through this tutorial. The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with some tips for success in this course, but it's also to help you to adjust to university courses in general. Much of the advice that you will be getting from this presentation uh, can be just as easily applied to other courses, and so you are actually encouraged to to use it throughout your whole academic career. Now, one of the reasons that I am doing this presentation or this tutorial is that many of the students that we're seeing in Bio 101 may be coming straight from high school, and so they might be getting um, a little bit of a shock when they get into their first class. Um, for example, you might be noticing that your classes might have gotten a little bit bigger well, maybe quite a bit bigger than you're used to. You also may have noticed that the material tends to be covered much more quickly, so it's much easier to get lost, fall behind, or become overwhelmed. Also, the person at the front of the room may not actually be speaking English. At least, it doesn't sound like it. Well, okay, it does sound kind of like English, but about half the words that he or she is saying are completely unfamiliar to you. And don't worry, that is perfectly normal. Basically, a lot of these introductory courses, one of the purpose of those courses is to have students introduced to the language of that particular field. So no matter if you are learn taking Bio 101 or Chemistry 101, Physics 101, all of them are basically doing the same thing. They are introducing you to the language of that particular field. So, in fact, you are kind of learning a whole new language. And this is a language that we will expect you to be able to use in the coming years. So, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed. You may be asking yourself, do I really belong here? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, you do. Uh, chances are, many of the students around you also feel the same way. We all have. I have. A lot of your faculty have as well. We've gone through it, and so will you. So... Don't worry, but it's always important to understand that university classrooms are different than high school classrooms. And there's a reason for that. So when you compare the two, you have in high school teachers who have been trained in teaching methods. So they are well prepared to present material in different ways and ways in which are likely to allow you to learn more easily. Uh, university professors don't have that same kind of training. Instead, they tend to get trained as experts in their particular areas of research. Um, teaching methods is something that we learn about when we do our professional development. So we don't have quite the same amount of um, exposure to a lot of the learning theories. As a result, a lot of professors will tend to stick to some of the older methods, especially lecturing. In high school classes, quite often, when material is presented to you, the teachers tend to stick to what's in the book, and they don't really go much beyond that. Whereas in universities, the textbook tends to be used more as a starting point for the lecture. Um, professors like to use it as figures for their presentations, as examples, and to give you the basic concepts. But quite often they will go beyond the textbook, and then, using that as a starting point, move into how these concepts are applied in the actual research and quite often bring in examples from their own research. In high school, teachers often write information on the board. Uh, basically, they are acting as models for you in how to take notes. Uh, they're trying to teach you how to pull out relevant information and which parts are, and to recognize which parts are important and which parts have a little bit less importance. In university, faculty already assume that you have those skills, so they will quite often simply speak um, at normal speed. They may not be uh, writing much down on the board for you, and quite often they will use PowerPoint notes that have very little text on them. Quite often the PowerPoint notes will contain not much more besides the actual figures from the textbooks that the professors will then discuss during their lectures. And lastly, in high school, material tends to be presented much more slowly and in smaller amounts than in university. Uh, you may have noticed this already. 
Uh, when you were in high school, you may have felt that, oh, the information is going by so quickly, but you're probably noticing that a lot more uh, in a university classroom. And that's quite frequently common because in many cases, professors will cover a chapter of a textbook in a week or maybe even in one lecture. So it's not uncommon. So you will need to adjust how you do things. You will need to work a little bit harder to keep up. It's very, very important that you keep up. Falling behind is likely to cost you, cause you some serious problems later on. Uh, you are also expected to read. Please understand that quite often the faculty will have listed the readings for the course within their syllabus. So for every lecture that's given, quite often there is some part of the textbook that they are expecting you to have already read before coming into class. And they will start lecturing based on the assumption that you have prepared for the class already, which may be one of the reasons why quite, a, quite often students will feel a little lost, because if they haven't done the preparation, they will be missing out on a lot of the language. Uh, they will be um, not as prepared as they should be. And so they will not be able to absorb the material as well as they could. So, in other words, you will need to study. Now, many of us are used to studying for exams, but this is a different kind of study. So we'll be discussing this in, throughout this whole set of presentations. Now, what does it mean to study? Well, this is one definition, though it's probably not the best one. In fact, I can't think of anyone who has successfully applied this studying strategy in their life. So I would not... Um, I would not recommend doing this type of studying. Now, before you do, uh, a few things that I'd like to get out of the way. When students get into a classroom, quite often they feel an adversarial relationship with their faculty members. But it's important to understand that your instructor is not trying to torture you. Uh, your instructor does not want you to fail. Uh, we actually do want you to succeed. But we have a a job which involves getting a lot of information into you. So we are trying to teach you something that you will need to know, especially in some of the courses later on. But keep in mind that we are trying to go from this. There's a lot of information that we might know that we are trying to condense to this. Now, this might still seem like a lot, and in many cases it is when you're starting out, but to do well, you need to understand that you will need to put an extra effort to absorb as much of this as possible. So, yes, you will need to study. 